It's time to relax, grab a drink, pull up a chair by the hearth, and have a seat in the Skald Circle to listen to the tale of The Serpent in the Wood, from Basque as told by Casimir. Before we begin our story, we wanted to remind you that we release new tales for free every week. Our shorter tales release on Wednesdays, and our longer chapter stories release on every other Saturday. Find out where you can hear them on our website at thescaldcircle.com. And be certain to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, or whatever your favorite podcast app is. That way, you'll never miss out on one of our enchanting tales from around the world. And this is the tale of the serpent in the wood. Like many others in the world, there was a widower who had three daughters. One day, the eldest said to her father that she must go and see the country. She walked on for two hours and saw some men cutting furs and others mowing hay. She returned to the house, astonished at having seen such wonderful things. She told her father what wonderful things she had seen, and her father replied, Men cutting furs, men mowing hay. The second daughter asked, too, to go like her sister, and she returned after seeing the same things. And the third daughter said she ought to go, too. Child, what will you see? I, like my sister, something or other. She set off on the same road as the others, and she, like the others, saw men cutting furs and men mowing hay. She went on further and she saw a washerwoman. She still went a little further on till she walked for three hours, and she saw some woodcutters cutting firewood. She asked them if she should see anything more if she went a little further. They told her she would see some more woodcutters cutting firewood. She went very much farther into the wood, and she was caught and kept prisoner by a serpent. She remained there crying and not able to eat anything, and she remained like that for eight days, very sad. Then she began to grow resigned, and she remained there for three years. At the end of the three years, she began to wish to return home. The serpent told her to come back again at the end of two days, that his time was nearly finished and he was a king's son condemned for four years to be a serpent. He gave her a dye staff and spindle of silver gilt on a silk handkerchief, and he said to her, If you do not find me here on your return, you will have to wear out seven pairs of shoes, six of leather, and one pair of iron ones, before you will be able to find me. When she came home, her father would not let her go back into the house where she had passed for such a long time with the son of a king, condemned to be a serpent. She said his time was almost finished and that in gratitude she ought return, that he said he would marry her. The father had her put in prison, confined in a room very high up. The fourth day she escaped and went to the place, but she did not find the king's son. She already had shoes on her feet. She had almost worn them out. After that, she bought another pair. She kept journeying on and on, asking if it were far, and they told her it was very far. She still bought another pair of shoes, and these two got worn out by the road. She bought a fifth pair, after them a sixth also. She then asked if she were very near yet, and they told her she was still very far. Then she bought the seventh pair of shoes of iron, and when she had gone a short way in these shoes, she asked if it were very far to the son of the king. The seventh pair of shoes were almost worn out when she came to a city, and heard the sound of music. She inquired what was happening in the city. Such a king's son is to be married today. She went to the house and knocked at the door. A servant came. What do you want? She asked if there was any work to spin, and she would spin it. And the servant went to tell the mistress. The lady ordered the servant to bring her in. She brought her in, and when she was in the kitchen, she sewed the silk handkerchief which the king's son had given her, and began to blow her nose with it. The lady was quite astonished to see the girl blow her nose with such a beautiful handkerchief, as if it were nothing when her son had one just like it for his marriage day. So she told her son, when he came back from the church, that she had a new spinster who came from a great distance and said to him, She has a silk handkerchief just like yours. And the king's son said to his mother, I too must see the spinster that you have there. And he began to go there. And his mother said to him, But why must you see her? I wish to see her. He went to the kitchen, and in his presence she used her silk handkerchief. He said to her, Show me that. 
she said to him, It is too dirty to put in your hands, sir. The gentleman said to her, I wish to see it and show it to me. Then he recognized the young girl. She showed him too the dye staff and spindle. At the table, when everyone was engaged in telling stories, the king said, I also have a story to tell. Everybody went silent and turned to look at him, and he said, Formerly I had a key to a chest of drawers, and I lost it, and made a new one. After that I found the old one. He turned to his wife. Should I use the old one or the new one? If the first one was a good one, why should you make use of the new one? Then he gave her this answer. Formerly I had a wife, and now I have taken you. I leave you and take the former one. Do you go off then to your own house? And that is the tale of the serpent in the wood from Basque. Thank you for listening to our story. If you enjoyed it, we recommend taking a look at our Patreon page, as noted in the description below. You can earn great rewards while also supporting us, to keep these stories alive for generations to come. Also, remember to subscribe to us on your podcast app, and leave us a five-star rating if you enjoyed this story. A special thank you to Cat for their support this month. Without your contribution, we wouldn't be able to continue these stories, and we truly appreciate it. Visit thescaldcircle.com to stay up to date with all of our current events, news, and much more. Not only that, but you can also visit our story archive of every tale we have ever told. It's sorted by origin and region for the convenience of your listening pleasure. Thank you for listening to our story. <laughs>